another day, another harebrained idea. Oh. Today, we're going to be building a crane, which would be lifting truck beds off of trucks, perhaps even engines. Got a nice design right here. Bear in mind, as a disclaimer, that I didn't do any load calculations. Make no guarantees, I'm just a bozo on the internet. So, we'll be building this thing up, I'm gonna put a winch on top, and it'll be great. Let's get to it. As far as materials go, we got six four by four, 10 foot boards, one two by eight board, uh, it's eight feet long, five eighths inch, 10 inch long lag bolts with nuts and washers. We're gonna need three quarter inch, perhaps even a one inch wood boring bit, drill, pen, deck screws, or any outdoor rated screws for that matter, some measuring tape, and of course, a circular saw. This is of course all pressure treated because I plan on keeping this outside. First things first, let's make those base platforms. We just cut this in half, four feet. Mark. Not very impressive torque, man. Not impressed at all. Okay, that was atrocious. Let's up the ante, shall we? Every time something goes wrong, I'm gonna take a swig. I'm gonna be wasted. And incidentally, tool review. Milwaukee circular saw, two by fours, fine. Four by fours, <laughs> Bringing on my table saw. Off camera, I tried to get the laser to work, which worked fine before I even changed the battery. And it doesn't work, so <laughs> another swig for me. Next up, we're gonna cut the angles down at the base here. All I'm gonna do is measure out 5 8 inches from this corner, and I'm gonna cut that angle. Let's measure about 5 8 inches. Five Let's see if we can get her done. Now do this four more times because we have four of these. Right. Now we have four of these. Next up, we're going to do this cut right here. You see this? How we're going to buttress of this 4x4 four four in between? Here's how to determine where to make that cut. I have flipped this top piece over. We've got the cut here. An easy way to determine which side to cut so you don't mess up. Don't touch the longest side, do cut the shortest side. Don't touch long, do cut short. So, short side. We're gonna put our marks here. Let me show you. Make a halfway mark. The actual true measurement of it is three and a half inches, sorry. So we're gonna put a tick mark at one and three quarter inches. And then we're gonna measure this dimension 10 inches from here, which is the short side or the cut end. And our goal here, going back to the Milwaukee disappointment. All right, all right. Do this three more times. Right, after an agonizing sawing session with this thing, I also want to point out something else. It's agonizingly hot. Look at that, 160 degrees, and I'm trying to hold the surface. It's like, ah, what the fuck, Milwaukee? Next up, we will attach the baseboards. Got a little bit of a mock-up here. You can see where I've put a 4x4 four four scrap piece so that there's proper spacing here at the top. The bottom got a contraption of sorts, the wedges that we cut out earlier. That's what I'm using to properly position this. It's supposed to go buttress at the very end, dead center on the plank. Same over there. Next, we've got these self-tapping deck screws. Drill four of them on each side. Same thing on the other side. All right, we're almost at a finish line. We've got two of these. I modified the design just a hair. I got two four by fours instead of the singular one here with the um the big shim the big support there i added for extra strength just out of paranoia the way to position these is here i've pretty much measured it out i've laid it out it's nine and three quarters from this end nine feet and three quarters from that end to this end and then you go over here to the opposite end 
and you're supposed to measure the same. So I got nine feet and three quarters here as well. I've, I have a little bit of them hanging out here. Same thing here on this side. Now it's time to drill. Let's drill some holes. I'm gonna start with the three quarter inch bore bit. Oh, come on. Perpendicular to the ground. I'm gonna try to push this aside a little bit. Got a little bit of flex on that. Try to keep boring down and down into this. All right, a heck of a lot of drilling and moving these boards aside later. <laughs> For your reference uh, and convenience, get a much longer three quarter inch with the boring bit. Did I not make it? Yeah, that's a fuck up. Bottoms up, loser. Not easy. I wish I already had one of these so I could build one of these. <laughs> I'm sweating balls, getting increasingly drunk, and I can't see shit because it's getting dark. Let me get a hammer. Heck, a lot easier with the hammer. And incidentally, because they're squared off like this, the hammer can help really wedge it in here without you having to countersink it. Let's see. I'm gonna take the washer and I'm gonna put the nut. <laughs> yeah, all right. Once we erect it, then we're gonna take a wrench and actually tighten them down real nice. Rinse and repeat on the other side. Put a few screws in on either side here. Big old drill bit. I'm gonna drill just a bit of waist down. Repeat this exercise, both sides here, both sides on the other side. Let's erect this bad boy. <laughs> all right, it all comes down to this. Let's attempt to erect this almighty beast. Whew, am I feeling strong? Oh shit, yeah, that's heavy. Two sawhorses better than one sawhorse. Okay, easily the dumbest idea I've had so far. Rickety ass ladder. Don't try this at home. I'm a professional bozo. Much, much, much later. So behind me is a major oopsie. That's what happens when you don't support the sides. It just, it kind of has that freedom to keep tilting. And <laughs> as you just saw, it done right fucking collapsed on me when I uh, lifted the pickup bed using it. I'm gonna add those sides and straighten it out. And hopefully after that, it will be a fairly safe and reliable gantry. Right. Now that we've added those plates up there, we have kind of taken care of the lean of this thing. Now it's gonna be time to add plates here on either side, and then we will create a triangle so that this thing has better stability and less inclination to wanna to collapse, which is always a good thing. Right, there's the basic idea. I measured these about 18 inches down, both sides. Now we're going to buttress those two by fours down there against this and build us some nice triangle. Now I've added these triangles to the structure. This one, they're both kind of, they're both buttressed against this. Got two on each side. 
This one's on the side. This one, though, is on the bottom. These screws aren't structural. They're there just to keep it in place. The wood's going to be doing all the work as force comes down, gets transferred through this beam, and then keeps on going down. Same story on the other side. And, of course, I got the screws coming in this direction from the other side. You want to keep this piece of wood on the inside because if you put it on the outside, it's probably just going to rip out the screws. Finally, we got to keep those legs spread apart, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. So I buttressed them up both sides with these diagonal crossbars. And so that there is how you build a gantry. I have already used it successfully to pull my Subaru's engine. No collapse. No collapse, so that's a good thing. I mean, it's certainly more structurally sound than it was before. I feel re reasonably comfortable with somewhat heavy loads, but I wouldn't trust my life with it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Lift that like button, ratchet up that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. I cannot self-terminate. <laughs> <laughs>